I am Julie and I am honored to come and bring you a whole yoga class. This session will be an hour long and it's my go-to routine. I've been doing this routine for about three years, but the key is I've been doing it every day for about three and a half years actually. And um, I came into it in a lot of chronic pain. I couldn't do half of it when I started and after um, just you know, sitting during those things I couldn't do and breathing and observing, eventually the strength started to build. So I just say all that to um, encourage anybody who's out there, if you think, oh, I can't do any of that, um, never say never, because I did get the relief that I needed in just the little that I could do, and it continued to build. It continued to give me more and more relief. Um, and so I now, I really feel like this is a tool that God gave me to help me um, in that season of that chronic pain, and I want to share it with other people. The best part about it, though, holy yoga, the best part is God's Word. And so today's intention, intention is coming from John chapter 3, verse 34, and it's just real, real simple, not real simple, but real short. It says, God gives the Spirit without measure. And um, anytime I share uh, from God's Word, believe me, I am sharing because it has brought me um, some hope. And um, so I'm just hoping that it does that for somebody else too. So I, when I came to this, I really realized it's so true. He gives the Spirit without measure. He doesn't measure us by what we've done or anything like that or what he's expecting us to do or anything. He just wants us to come to him just as we are. And then when we start to believe, this passage was spoken by John the Baptist when he was telling about Jesus. And he said, yeah, Jesus is the Son of God and he came to save us. And not only that, God gives the Spirit without measure. And um, when I just look at that, I'm just amazed because that's so true. We come just as we are. We go, okay, he came to save us. We believe that. And then he pours out his spirit on us because he knows that's what we need. And then he doesn't just give us that. He's there to help grow that. And so we can continue to come to him again and again. And he gives us what we need by that spirit immeasurably more than what we can ask or imagine. So God gives us his spirit without measure. We're gonna let that sink in today as we breathe and move and practice. So like I said, we'll be going for about an hour. And this is, um, just do what you can do. And anything that you can't do, just breathe. Breathe, you're gonna benefit from the breath, believe me. So, feet hip distance apart and toes forward. You want to be almost as if your feet are parallel to each other. And then from there, we'll start to root in. So starting to feel that all four corners of the feet going in and out with the soles of your feet. And as you're doing that, start to evenly press over the arches. So pressing on the two outside points on the outsides of the ball of the feet and the two points on the backs of the heel, trying to evenly disperse that weight. Lifting up the toes and then setting maybe toes down and pressing the tip of the toe into the mat, feeling the arches begin to lift, feeling the inner leg muscles turn on, and then from there we'll take it to the pelvis. You want to engage it. So just a slight tuck of the tailbone, belly in and up, and as we engage that, we can feel just the muscles start to turn on around the bones, and then we'll face the palms forward, lift the sternum, Feel how the backs of the shoulder blades start to engage and draw the shoulders behind the heart, relaxing and lengthening behind the neck. If when you did that your ribs jutted out, just hug the ribs in, supporting more around that spine. And then lastly, we're going to tuck the chin, ears in line with the shoulders, lift through the crown of the head. And here we are in a mountain pose. You can start to close your eyes and just notice your breathing here, going in and out. Each breath, it's pretty amazing, isn't it? It's a gift. And I love when I just start to bring my attention to the breath that reminds me that God is here. His spirit is here. And he gives it without measure. And so whatever it is that you need, just come. 
stand before him asking because he's willing to give it. He's so willing. Just come knowing that he knows what's best. And so the timing of that, yeah, we don't get it. But he knows what's best and we can trust him that his timing and how he gives us that and what we need is perfect. Because he knows what's best and he wants what's best for us. So start to take deeper breaths than normal, filling up the belly, letting that belly expand like a balloon. Yeah, it doesn't look very pretty, right? But then when you exhale, draw the belly in towards the backbone, feeling all that good support, exhaling all the air out. And then doing that at your own pace, filling up the belly. It can be in through the nose, in through the mouth, doesn't matter, just whatever's comfortable for you. Maybe just ask him here as you breathe in deep. Just ask him for more. More of his spirit. Because it says in his word that his spirit, the fruits of the spirit, are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, faithfulness, gentleness. And who doesn't want more of that? asking him here immeasurably more come in and fill fill us with your spirit God take one more deep breath in and exhale and relax the hands down and then we'll go ahead and roll the shoulders so as you roll the shoulders just little circles maybe getting a little bit bigger and then a little bit bigger with the elbows maybe and then the whole arm that up and over, maybe a little slower, extending all the way through that time. And then switching directions, going the other way. Rolling the shoulders, and then the elbows, and then the whole arm. Still taking those nice deep breaths. Good. And then relax the hands down, deep breath in. We're going to exhale let the weight of the body just fall to the side. Let this arm hang right here, feeling the lower oblique, lower back, get a nice stretch. If you want, you can zip that arm up, maybe reach it all the way up, maybe take your chin towards the ceiling a little bit deeper. And then back to center, another deep breath in. Exhale, let the weight of the body fall the other way, letting that arm release to the side, get a nice stretch, this lower oblique. Maybe zipping that arm up, maybe taking your chin towards the ceiling. Maybe even reaching that arm all the way up. And back to center. Some gentle twists here, just letting the spine warm up, letting the arms flap around. Relax the hands down. Inhale, look up, wherever's comfortable for your neck. Exhale, chin to the chest, relax the shoulders. And then do that again. Inhale, look up. Exhale, chin to the chest. Relax the shoulders. And then back to center. Gently roll the neck so you can maybe tilt the ear to the side. And then inhale, the head rolling it back. Wherever's comfortable for the neck. Exhale, let the head roll forward. And then switch direction. Inhaling back. Exhaling forward. And back to center. Squeeze the shoulders up. Up tight, inhaling and exhale them down. We're going to come up onto the balls of the feet, working some balance, and then back and forth, massage the bottoms of the feet, working that balance. Good, coming on down, spread the toes wide, grip into the mat, inhale the hands up in the prayer hands, and then exhale them down over the heart. And dear Jesus, we thank you. Thank you so much that we can breathe and stretch and focus on your word. So yeah, we ask you, Father, you say that you give your spirit without measure. We thank you for that. We thank you that you give us what we need. You fill us with that love, joy, peace that only you can give. It's supernatural when you do that. So we ask you to go into all those spaces in us and fill us up. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So reach up, tighten your thighs, your glutes, 
arms stay right in line with the ears. We're going to gently fold back. Just a little back bend here. And then coming all the way up into prayer hands. Exhale them down, forward fold, hinging at the hips. So if you need to support your back, you can take your hands to your thighs to help support you here in this first forward fold. And just take it wherever it feels good for you from there. Just maybe releasing the arms, the head. You can slightly bend the knees if you want to. Let the head become heavy. Relax. Back to the legs. Bend the right knee a little deeper. Exhale down the left leg. And then switch. Bend the left knee a little deeper. Exhale down the right leg. Go ahead and straighten both legs. Inhale, halfway up, pointing your fingers at the ground. Reach with the tailbone, squeeze the quads, reach with the top of the head. Lengthen the spine and then exhale, sink into that. Doesn't matter if your hands touch the floor or not. If you want them to, just bend your knees. You can still get the benefit of some length in the spine. Just nice, long exhale. So do that again. Inhale, halfway up. Reach with the top of the head, lengthen the spine, squeeze the quads, reach with the tailbone. Maybe pointing your fingers at the floor, or maybe palms are flat, whatever you feel like and whatever is available to you. And then exhale, sink into that. Last time, halfway lift. Reach, breathe in. And exhale. And then we'll go ahead and step back with the left foot. So we're coming into our first high lunge. Walking the hands up to the knee, all the toes forward. Press into the front heel, press the back heel back, feeling that scissor effect in the leg so you can really turn on all those leg muscles around the bones. The more taller you sit, the more you'll feel that in your hip flexor. Breathe. And then we'll inhale the left arm up, long through the side body, and take that left elbow to the outer right thigh, pressing in prayer hands. So if this is too much to keep that back leg up, you can set the knee down. But wherever you're at, just reach with the tailbone, reach with the top of the head. Lengthening that spine as you twist. Good. Take the arms back to center. Reach them up. Coming into our lunge again. Draw the shoulders back and down. And then slowly press the hands down like you're pressing through water. Interlace the fingers together. Look up. Relax the shoulders down. And maybe press a little bit down with the palms, opening up the fronts of the shoulders, the sternum. Good, take the chin over the knee, set the hands down, and step that back foot up and come all the way up into warrior one. So back foot's at a slight angle, we bend the front knee, it tracks with the toes, squaring the hips forward, lots of breath, press into the feet. Draw the shoulders back and down, reach to the fingers. Any pressure in your low back, just tilt forward a little bit, and that'll take it right out. Another deep breath in. And then exhale, hands down to the hips, straight in front like pyramid pose. So we're hinging forward here, just letting the ribs come a little bit closer. Your gaze is out ahead, so to keep the neck and head in line with the spine. And we want a long spine, no rounding like this. It won't grow as much as you will as if you keep the spine straight. So long spine, not rounded. Breath, doing that stretch for you, never pushing. God doesn't push us around. He just comes, he says, come as you are. And he pours that spirit out on us without measure, just as we are. And he helps us grow. He's the one that changes us from the inside out. We can't do it on our own. We need him. Good, bend the front knee and step back into your lunge. And we're gonna set both hands inside the foot here and open up the hips. So let the knee fall to the side on the outer edge of this foot, feeling that awesome stretch all the way around the hip joint. So you can stay here, breathing. If you want a little bit more, you can lower the knee to the floor. If it's available to you, you can walk the forearms to the floor. Maybe lift that back foot. It's a big quad stretch there, so just a maybe. Maybe reach around and hook that foot. Open up the shoulder. Twisting, opening. And then release, and we'll go ahead and set the hands.
the back side of that foot, shoulder into knee, knee into shoulder, lift the knee up in the back, and set the heel down, turn the toes out, extended side angle pose. Reaching up, looking up, extending and pressing into the outer edge of that foot. So even walk that foot in if you need to, to do that. Lowering the hip, rotate the palm towards the ear and reach that hand over, reaching from the blade of the fingers, the blade of the foot to the fingers. And then exhale that hand down, a little bit of space between the hand and the foot, straighten the front leg, revolve triangle pose. Draw the right hip back, left hip forward, deeper that rotation. Deep breath in. And then exhale that hand down, turn all the toes forward, and we're back into our lunge. And we'll go ahead and step back into plank. Hands under the shoulders, fingers spread wide. Start to really straighten that back by squeezing the glutes, hugging the ribs in, the belly. Draw the shoulders back and down. Press back to the heels. So nice and firm through that plank. Breathe. Then we'll take it into a side plank. So pressing palm into the ground, coming to the outer edge of that foot, maybe stacking the feet, maybe side by side. Maybe reaching up, looking up. If you want to add to it, maybe taking that foot and grabbing it, extending the leg. That's way advanced, so that's just optional if you want to. Releasing that and then coming back down into our plank. Getting nice and set up here. Breathe. Other side, pressing the palm into the ground, reaching up, maybe stacking the feet or maybe they're side by side, whichever you prefer. Looking up, optional. Maybe grabbing and lifting that foot. That's a big pose. Again, you don't have to do that. That's just if you want to. Go ahead and come back down into your plank, lowering down. Elbows hugging to the sides of the body. Four, three, two, and one. Exhale the hips into the floor. As you gently press up, keep the palms right to the sides of the chest, elbows hugging in. And then relax the shoulders, maybe look up. Whoever's comfortable for your back here. Taking the chin to the chest, we'll press back in the child's foot. Relax a couple of seconds. Good work. One more deep breath in. Hands out in front of the shoulders. Tuck the toes. Press up into downward dog. So draw the shoulders back and down, press through the heels, lift the belly, as if a rope's wrapped around it, and then relax the neck. So bend the right knee, press the left heel back, stretching that calf, and then switch, bend the left knee, press the right heel back, stretching that calf. And then straighten both, lift the right leg up. Press your palm to the ground, reach with the toes. Maybe come up onto the ball of the feet, stack that hip over the other and let the heel fall back, opening up the hip here. Breathe. And then inhale, extend that leg. Exhale, take that knee toward the chin, shifting the shoulders over the wrist. And we'll go ahead and set that down. Do the same thing on the other side, lifting the left leg up. Press your palms into the ground, reach with the toes. You come up high on the ball of the foot, stack that hip on top of the other, and let that heel fall towards the side. And unstacking that hip, inhale that leg up, coming back down onto the, if you want, pressing that heel back to the mat, exhale that knee towards the chin. And then we'll step all the way through with the left foot, coming to our lunge on the other side. You can walk the hands up to the knee if you need to. And sitting tall, we're going to do that all on the other side. So pressing in the front heel, pressing the back leg, straight as you can, really grounding, turning on those leg muscles. Inhale the right arm up, long through that side, and we'll take the right elbow out to the left side, prayer hands twisting. So you can set that back knee down if you need to. Breathe, lengthen with the tailbone at the top of the head creating that space between the vertebrae and twist. And then take the arms back out and up. Draw the shoulders back and down, reach. Then slowly 
Press the hands down, clasp them behind the back. Knee your teeth together and look up. Relax the shoulders down. And then we'll take the chin over the knees, step back, foot in, coming up to warrior one. So bending the front knee, tracking with the toes, squaring the hips forward. That back foot's at a slight angle. Pressing into all four corners of the feet. Again, reach. Any pressure in your low back, just tilt forward a little. Draw the shoulders back and down. Deep breath in. Exhale. Hands down to the hips, straight in the front like pyramid pose. So hinging. Letting the breath do that stretch. Flat back. Remember not to round. It's not about the head looking at the knee. It's about gazing at the head, reaching with the top of the head, straight spine. And that's what will get up. And then we'll go ahead and bend the front knees, step back into our lunge, step both hands inside that foot, and then get into that hip. So dropping the knee out to the side on the edge of that foot, and just breathing right here. So you can stay here, or you can take it further by lowering the knee, maybe walking the hands, forearms to the floor, maybe even lifting that back foot up and turning and hooking that foot with your hand and opening up. Chest. Coming back to center, hands come back to the floor, press shoulder into the knee, knee into the shoulder. Lift the back knee, set the heel down, turn the toes out, extend the arm, extend the side pose. Side pose, yeah. So really, really, really breathing and pressing to that outer edge of the foot, lowering the hip. Rotate the palm towards the ear, reaching overhead. Reaching for the blade of the foot to the fingers. And then exhale that hand down. A little bit of space as you turn and reach up with the other hand. Draw, straightening the leg for revolved triangle pose. Draw the left hip back, right hip forward. Deep breath in. Exhale that hand down. Turn all the toes forward. Bend the front knee. We're back into our lunge. We'll go ahead and step on into a forward fold. So relaxing here. Maybe taking your head yes or no. Releasing any neck tension. If you want, you could come and reach behind the legs. Maybe gently pull in a little bit further. And release. Bend the knees, chin the chest, and we'll load up for four, three, two, and one. Inhale, the hands up. In the prayer hands, exhale and down. Good. Woo. Building that some heat there. All right, step back with the right foot, coming into warrior three pose. Arms can be out to the side or prayer hands, whichever you prefer. And we'll come on up, straightening the front leg, hinging, trying to get parallel to the floor, even squaring this hip towards the floor by pointing the pinky toe of the toes. Maybe even reaching that, the arms out, hugging the ribs, hugging the belly. Really core engaged, breathe. And then slowly coming on up. Stretch towards the ceiling, tighten your thighs, your glutes, and gently fold back. Coming all the way up into prayer hands. Exhaling down. Other side. Stepping back with the left foot. Again, prayer hands to the sides, or maybe even prayer hands behind the back if you want a wrist stretch. Coming up onto that front leg, hinging. Remember, squaring up that hip even by pointing the pinky toe towards the floor. Press back through the heel, hug the ribs, the belly, reach with the top of the head. Breathe. And then we'll go ahead and come on up in tree pose and shake out those wrists. So tree pose anywhere above or below the knee. Doesn't matter, you're just drawing this knee out to the side. And from there, we'll go ahead and once you find your balance, you can find a focal point to stare out on the floor ahead of you. We inhale the hands up into prayer hands. Exhale down. You can stay here working your tree pose, or if you want, you can release and grab the knee. Maybe work to grab the ankle or the heel, eventually working maybe to extend that leg. So just all kinds of ways you can work that. And remember, I couldn't do half of this when I started every day for the last three years, and I've only done it because it brought me relief. Set that foot on top of the other, draw the knee out, face the palms forward, deep breath in. Exhale, 
to relax the shoulders down. Maybe close the eyes here. And set it down. That's not easy. All right, tree pose on the other side, anywhere above or below the knee. Draw the knee out. Find that focal point. Inhale the hands up into prayer hands. Lengthening. Exhale, hands over the heart. Maybe staying here because every second count building. It's building. And then maybe release the knee, extend the arm, maybe grab the ankle or the heel, maybe work to extend that leg. But just taking that wherever is good for you. And we'll set that foot on top of the other, draw the knee out, place the palms forward, deep breath in. Exhale, shoulders down, and you see if you can close the eyes. Challenges that balance a little bit more. Follow each breath. If you like to think, be still and know that He is God. And then we'll go ahead and set that down. Bend the knees, cross one leg over, on the floor, on a block, or wrapped all the way around. Opposite arm of the top leg is going to come up, other one's going to wrap up, and then you're just lifting the elbows about shoulder height. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the leg. And then you're maybe starting to come forward with that. Maybe. You don't have to, though. You can stay up. This is just if you want to add to it. Breathe. And then we'll come undo that, take the arms out, and try to extend the leg without leaning back. And set that down. Other side, bend the knees. Crossing the other leg on the floor, on a block, or all the way around, whatever you prefer. Opposite arm the top leg comes up, other one wraps. Lifting the arms, squeezing the leg, and then lowering, maybe. Only if you want, you can stay there. Remember, you don't have to do all of it. And then coming, undo that. Arms out. Try to extend that leg without leaning back. And set it down. Take a wide stance. So you're going to take the feet and turn them out and track the knees with the toes. And then from there, see if we can sit really tall and take the arms out and up. Deep breath in and come up onto that right ball of the foot. Exhale it down. Another deep breath in, come up onto the left ball of the foot. Exhale that down. Deep breath, both balls of the feet. And exhale that down. One more deep breath. Exhale, vertically lower down into it a little bit more. And then we'll go ahead and take those forearms into the inner thighs and gently press in, going back and forth. So just warming up those inner thighs now. We work them. Damn. Releasing. Taking that left hand inside that left knee, work to lower the shoulder and turn and look over the other shoulder. Switching sides, same thing. Turn to look over that shoulder as you lower the other shoulder. Back to center. Exhale. Press in. And then we'll go ahead and come on forward. Now, if this is new to you, you can go ahead and just hang out here in a forward fold. Just relax. If you want to work an advanced posture, you can start to bring the hands behind the heels. Trying to get your wrists flat on the floor, fingers face forward. And then from there, you're really trying to work those legs high up onto the arms. A lot of lower back lengthening here. So again, listen to your body. And then eventually, maybe you're able to walk the feet together. Maybe switch them. Maybe eventually coming up into firefly where we extend those legs out. So lots of, lots of ways this continues to build. So again, that's just wanted to offer some advanced posture so you can see what that can build up to. So in our forward fold, we go ahead and you can bend the knees if you need to, or if you don't need to, slide the hands underneath the feet. Give your hands a nice massage. Pulling up on the wrists, to the chest. And then maybe grab the toes. Pull up on the toes, taking your chin in your chest. Slight 
tuck the tailbone, belly in, and then with those palms pulling back on each other, we're going to take it to the side. Just the upper body breathing into that lung. Maybe taking your gaze up into the arm. And then back to center. Relax the hands, pull in the opposite directions again. Same thing on the other side. Maybe take your gaze up. And back to center. Unclasp the hands, clasp them behind the back. Keep your teeth together, look up. Press down and out through the arms. It looks like this. And then chin in the chest. Tucking the chin back so your ears are in line with your shoulders. So lift the arms behind you. Squeezing the shoulders back. And release. Shake it out. Warrior two pose. So wide stance. Turn your right foot out. Make sure when you bend your knee, it tracks with the toes. Press the outer blade of the foot into the mat. Ground all four corners of the feet. Arms reaching and active. Looking in the direction of that bent knee. Hips are faced out, and then from there, tuck the tailbone, belly in and up, support that core, feel the lift. Turn the palms over, drop the thumbs, turn them back over, reverse warrior, up and back, deep breath in, exhale, straighten the front leg, reach this a little bit more. Yes, it's true, our God is fighting for us. Take the arms back down. Reach out over the toes, triangle pose. Hands to the leg, arms in a straight line. Feels like your back is against the wall. Rotate the palm over the ear, reaching from the blade of the foot to the fingers. And then take that arm behind the back, bend the front knee. Rest the forearm on the thigh here. Draw the shoulder back for that arm that's reaching back. So you can stay here if you want to work a bird of paradise. And you're able to do that where your shoulders still drawn back and the hands to the floor, shoulders still back to take the bind, then you're ready. You can go ahead and work that word of paradise because it's advanced. So no worries, just take that wherever you're at. Reaching with that leg, drawing the shoulders back. All right, other side, warrior two pose. Turning the left foot out, bending the knee, tracking it with the toes. Hips are faced out, outer edge of that foot is pressing into the mat, arms reaching and active, looking in the direction of the bent knee. Tuck the tailbone, belly in, lift through that core, turn the palms over, drop the thumbs. Turn them back over, reverse warrior. Fill up that lung as you breathe in. Exhale, straighten the front leg, another deep breath in. And then we'll take the arms back down, reach out over the toes, and reach up, triangle pose. So stacking the shoulders, arms in a straight line, as if your back is against a wall here. If you want more, you can rotate the palm towards the ear, reach the arm overhead, extending from that blade of the foot to the fingers. And then we'll take the arm behind the back, bend the front knee, and rest that forearm on the thigh. We're just drawing the shoulder back with that arm that's reaching back, maybe lowering the hip a little bit more. If it's available to you and you can take that hand and floor and the shoulder's still drawn back, that's a clue that you're ready to maybe take the bind, and then maybe you're ready to start to work that bit of bird of paradise. So just taking that wherever's good for you. So the bird of paradise, press through that leg, keep the core engaged, draw the shoulder back, and then you work to extend that leg. Right, so we'll set that down, wide-legged forward fold, toes forward this time, and we're just hinging up the hips, coming forward, grab the shoulders, maybe slowly sway side to side, any areas of tension, just breathe into those. Release the arms and grab tops of the feet, press your forearms into the legs. Now, if that is too hard, remember, you can come up higher, press your forearms higher into the legs. It doesn't have to be the feet. Point your chin at the ground. Turn your hip bones up and back. Release. Swap the hands over to your right. Turn the toes out slightly. We're going to exhale again that long spine over the leg. So it's not about chin coming towards that knee. You're going to round your back that way. So you're going to try to keep your gaze out ahead of your toes and just exhale the ribs over the thigh. 
And then we'll turn those toes forward, walk the hands over to the other side, turn those toes out slightly. Remember, it's about this long, straight spine coming forward. Not this, not grounding, okay? And here's exhaling those ribs over that thigh. Lots of breath, never pushing. Turn those toes forward, and we'll walk the hands through the legs as far as we can. Gripping the mat, gently pull through to the chest. And then release, grab the hands, clasp them, and let them fall wherever you want, taking your chin and your chest. And then we'll release, we'll do some flying monkeys. So bending that right knee, keeping that knee right over that heel, and then maybe coming down and slowly extending this opposite leg, maybe opening the arms up. And then we'll do that same thing on the other side. Bending that knee, keeping it right over that heel as much as you can. And then maybe coming up onto that heel, opening the arms up if you want. And then we'll slowly come up out of that, walk the feet in. We're going to set the knee and the top of the foot down, and extend the other leg out in front. And then from here, we're just hinging forward, hips and shoulders square. Doing the stretches that we would work to do the splits. So again, it's long spine, shoulders drawn back, straight spine, not rounding. Gaze is right out ahead to keep the head and neck in line with the spine. Bend the front knee, sit the hips forward, getting into those hip flexors. Now, if that is too much, you can totally use blocks here. I was here. I was totally here when I first started. It's okay. I could feel the stretch here. And I just stayed there. I thought, well, I'm getting relief from this, and so I don't care how far I go as long as I feel better. And I didn't know that it would continue to grow like that. It's really wild how that happens. But I give all the credit to God. And then that front knee, I cried out to him so many times, help me. I want to be able to do what you've created me to do, and I can't when I'm in this much pain. And he heard me. And so I want to give it back to him. So if there's anybody out there that you know that everything's fine in your body, you've been checked by doctors over and over, but something, and you just don't know what is going on, you're in pain, I invite you to take a try at this and see what happens. The deep breathing, the stretching. It's an amazing thing. Amazing tool he's given us. Eventually, I've never been able to do the splits in my life, and as that started to release, eventually that happened. So, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. And we'll go ahead and come on up to that knee. If you want to just stay here and maybe reach one arm up or both, you can get into it and start to work a little bit of the back bend. Really, really getting into that hip flexor. Strengthening the back too. Switching sides, knee on the top of the foot down, taking that heel out, toes up, hips and shoulders are squared, and then here we go forward again. So remember, you've got blocks, if you've got those, you can just slightly bend the elbows. As long as you're keeping that back flat, you've got it. And just lots of breath. So he gives us the spirit without measure. He gave me more than what I even could have imagined. I'm a piano teacher. I wasn't planning on teaching yoga in, at age 42. <laughs> if I would have been told that even five years ago, I'd have been like, well, who, what are you talking about? So, um, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. His ways are not our ways, but uh, they're better. They're better than what we can dream of. And um, so, so thankful that I get to just share about him as I do this and breathe and stretch. And that's what I love about holy yoga. It's just bringing his word into it and remembering him and reminding ourselves of who he is, who we are in him. So just breathing into those hip flexors, the back of that leg, working, working those muscles that you would eventually work to do the splits. And then we'll go ahead and come on up to that knee. And you can reach one arm up or both, and maybe even bring a back bend into it if you want to strengthen that back and get into that hip flexor. 
And then coming on up, we'll do some side stretches here. So here, we're gonna have the hip right over the knee, extend the foot out to the side. And make, just make sure wherever that foot is that you've got it nice and planted, all four corners, not caving into the arch. Reach the arm up towards the ear, and then we're just letting that weight of the body go to the side. Inhale up, exhale down, same thing on the other side. So extending that leg out, this hip is over the knee, for your good alignment, arm reaches up, and then we just let that weight of the body come to the side. Inhale up, exhale down, camel pose. This is a big pose. So your knees are right underneath the hips and you're gonna take your palms, press them into the tops of the hip bones, keeping the hips over the knees. Maybe you just start to look up and that's where you just feel it right there. Eventually as the back gets stronger, the legs, oh the legs. Imagine you're squeezing a ball between your legs. That is so good for lots more muscle support. So then you're just maybe drawing the elbows closer, and as that back gets stronger, maybe coming back and walking the hands back down the legs to the heels, and just taking that wherever's good, hugging the ribs in. When you're ready to come up from this, really, really squeeze that ball, and that's what lifts you up right out of that camel pose. And then tuck the toes, stretching the feet. That might be good right there. You might feel that stretch if you want a little bit more. You can come on down to the heels, sitting onto the heels and stretch the feet a little bit more. Wherever you're at, you can relax the hands to the side, tuck the chin, ears and the shoulders, turn to your right, look far with the eyes, relax the shoulders. And back to center, look far with the eyes, relax the shoulders. Back to center, squeeze the shoulders up. Exhale down. Coming on up into chair pose. Sitting back into the heels, tucking the tailbone, reaching through the top of the head, reach with the spine. Lengthen, strengthen those legs. Okay, you can stay here or you can come into a forward fold. I'm going to offer up a couple more advanced postures. If you want to come into crow, crow is where you have the hands shoulder distance or wider, fingers spread wide. You want to draw those knees into the outer triceps, high up as you can. And then lean forward, looking way out ahead, maybe lifting one foot, maybe lifting both, and really hug those knees around those arms, hug the core in. So just taking that wherever is good for you. Lots of good strengthening going on the wrist and core. If you want, you can take it to a side pro. So toes together here, get prepped up by taking the elbow to the outer thigh. And then prayer hands, just getting a nice twist here. Yeah, he's a good, good father. Gives us the spirit without measure. Good. If you wanted to stay there, that's a great building posture that can lead into side pro. And that's where you have that elbow really deep into that thigh. You reach way out maybe with the other arm, starting to bend that elbow and shift the weight. And then here you lift the legs. So lots of core, lots of balance work here. And then we'll go ahead and come on out, out of that if you're trying that. No worries. You can do that for a couple of years. <laughs> Had to gently work up all the core before that. So I'll show you the other side. Feet together, knees together, taking the elbow to the outer thigh. Just prepping this pose right here. So twisting, getting ready. And then when you've got that elbow deep into that outer thigh, and plant the hand, the fingers are forward on this type of sideward crow when you reach the arm out. Fingers forward, bending that outer elbow, shifting the weight. And then there you are. You can do all kinds of funky things with the legs. <laughs> so, as you learn to work that posture, come into gardener's pose. So, you can be flat footed or on the balls of your feet, whatever you want, and press in your hands. Taking the chin towards the hands if you want, lengthening the spine. Yeah, he's perfect in all his ways. He knows the perfect measure to give to us. He knows what we need. He gives it without measure. He's willing to give so much, more than we can even comprehend. 
So ask him, just ask him for all of it. He's good. He wants good things for you. He knows what's best for all of us. Go ahead and come on up. Press up to a forward fold. Grab the elbows. Just hang out here. Sometimes the way, the way isn't easy. But he's with us and he is for us. Release the arms, bend the knees, chin and the chest, roll it up for four, three, two, and one. Inhale the hands up. Maybe grab the wrist, or if you can grab the elbow without shoving your neck forward, you can do that. Engage the hips, toes are parallel to each other, hip distance, and then only the upper body comes to the side. Maybe take your gaze down to the floor this time. Back to center and reach, grab under either the wrist or the other elbow, and same thing. Bringing that upper body only, keep the hips right where they're at. Maybe taking your gaze towards the floor. Back to center and reach, tighten your thighs, your glutes, gently pull back. Coming all the way up into prayer hand, exhale and down. A little bit of balance practice, so ground your left foot or right foot, whichever one you do. Lift the knee, extend the arm. Maybe work to extend that leg, maybe eventually grab that toe and extend the leg. Grab the ankle, lower the arm. Knees are as close together as they can. Flex the foot into the hand so you can get a nice quad stretch there. And then we'll unflex the foot, bring that heel a little closer up to the glute, a little bit more quad stretch. Dancer pose. So in dancer pose, your hand can come out. This hand can be on the outside or the inside of the foot. You're tilting forward, pressing the foot into the hand, reaching. Keep the back muscles engaged. And that's what's going to help bring you back out of that posture. And then we'll go ahead and, not done yet, we're going to go ahead and take that leg, extend it, grab the opposite hand of that toe, reaching back, and this is the hard part, seeing so if you can turn your gaze and look back over that hand. Come back to center. Go ahead and see if we can bring the ankle over the knee. Prayer hands, one-legged chair. Press that knee towards the floor. All right, and if you want to work with even more about the advanced posture, you can take it into a, I don't know what you call this, I forgot it, flying pigeon. So you put that foot onto the back of that leg, tilting forward and reaching that leg out, and it's just a really hard balance. Can't get much height there today, that's okay. Every day is different. All right, and then coming up, we'll do that all on the other side. So grounding that foot, lifting that knee, extending the arm, extending the leg, maybe even using that hand to grab the toe and extend the leg. Grab the ankle, lower the arm, knees are as close together as they can, flexing that foot. Maybe both hands unflexing that foot in the back. Just turn to the side so you can see here. And then reach back out with the arm dancer pose. So remember the hand should be on the outside or inside of that foot as you feel, tilt forward. Activate the back muscles, press the foot into the hand, reach. And then we'll go ahead and bring that leg back in front, ankle over the knee. No, sorry, I forgot. Opposite hand to the toe, reach the arm back. And then maybe taking your gaze, looking back towards that hand. Then we'll take that ankle over the knee, prayer hands, lowering down one legged chair. Press that knee towards the floor. If you want to do a flying pigeon, you got to see if you can get those hands to the floor, that hook. That leg comes over the triceps, hooking the foot over those triceps, bending the elbows, and then you just maybe start to lean forward and extend that leg back. Yeah, not happening today. <laughs> That's all right. And then we'll come up, inhale up, exhale down. We're going to bring the rest of this to the floor now. All right. So on the floor, come to the front and bring your right leg over to that leg that is in front, and we're gonna hug it up into the chest. Left leg can be out straight. And then we're just twisting here. You can take that tricep to the outside of that knee if you want. Hand behind the back, sitting tall as you twist. 
Keep the belly drawing in, yet relax the tailbone a little. And then release. And we're gonna go ahead and take that foot inside of the leg and start to hinge forward. So that leg that was, the right leg that was over, now we have it bent and the foot is coming into the inner thigh. And as you're hinging forward, remember it's not about rounding, it's about keeping that back flat. So lots of length, lots of lengthening the spine here. Lots of breath. He gives the spirit without measure. And then go ahead and come on up. We'll set the left hand inside that left leg and then reach up. And maybe start to let the body come to the side as long as the sit bones are pressing into the floor. And just reaching that arm overhead if you want it. This is a big pose as you try to rotate the belly out and you come to the side. So no worries if you don't go far. It is definitely a big, big opening through the hips and the side. Inhale up. Exhale, take that hand to the outside of the knee, other behind the back, sitting tall, twist the other way. And then back to center. We'll lift that knee up. And you have several options here. You can come forward with both hands, or you can reach around and hug this leg and reach with one hand, or you can clasp hands behind the back and come forward that way. Just whichever one helps relax and release your spine, your lower spine especially. So, yeah, it is something, isn't it? I mean, he gives the spirit without measure. And sometimes it's, it's frustrating because we're just like, when? I don't see it, I don't know. And um, the thing is, he's doing something. In that process, he's doing something. And all he asks us to do is just keep turning our gaze to him, that's it. And he'll keep doing more. It's supernatural, I can't explain it. Go ahead and come on up, we'll grab that heel. Bring it out to the side. Reach that arm out. I'm just trying to sit tall, bring that leg out to the side. And then we'll go ahead and pull that heel back towards the ear, pulling back, reaching out. Archer's bow pose. So that hand can be on the leg to give you leverage. You can reach that foot out to that foot. And then we'll do a little advanced posture here. So if you don't want to do that, you can just stay coming forward, relaxing there. If you want to do this advanced posture, bring the ankle over the knee. Hands come in front of the hips, and then we lean forward and lift the bottom up. And again, if that doesn't work, even if it's just a millimeter and you're pressing with all your might, you're doing something, okay? If you're leaning forward, you're pressing into those hands and you're trying to lift, it's gonna build in time. In time. That's the hard thing is time, right? That can lead to elephant's trunk where eventually you can bring that leg over, hands in front of the hips, if you cross this leg over, and then lift the bottom that way and have your elephant's trunk, maybe unhooking that foot. Big core strengthener, great pose to strengthen the core. Come on down and baby cradle pose. Love this one. So hugging the leg in, rocking back and forth. Just lots of hip opening here. And then we'll release that. Straighten that leg out. Now we're gonna do all that on the other side. So taking the left knee over the right straightened leg. Sitting tall, hugging that knee into the torso, twisting. You can set that hand behind you on the floor to give you more lift in the spine as you twist. Draw the belly in, relax the tailbone. Maybe take the outer tricep to the outside of that knee. Good. Back to center, we'll uncross that leg over and let that foot come up into the inner thigh. And then from here, we're just hinging. Again, trying to keep a flat back. Because if our head is looking at the knee and we're rounding and trying to rest our head, my spine is not going to lengthen that way. Maybe it feels good, but if you want to really grow, you're going to get more if you keep that length and straight spine. It's harder. It's not going to go as far. But once everything starts to release and you start to get to those layers of the little muscles inside, that abdomen, they'll be able to turn on and they'll be able to start to bring that a little deeper once you get that length 
and those muscles to help pull you in. Then we'll go ahead and come on up, set the same hand inside that straight leg, reaching the other arm up, maybe just letting that arm gently come to the side, pressing the sit bones in the floor, rotating the belly button out, and just taking that wherever's comfortable for you. Inhale up, exhale, take that arm to the outer side of that knee, twisting, other hand can plant behind you, sitting tall as you twist. And back to center, we'll lift this knee up, and you have a little bit of space here between the foot and the leg, and you have several options. Both hands can come forward, reaching and hinging this way, hugging that knee and reaching with one, or clasping hands behind and coming forward. Whichever one works best to help you relax that lower spine, lengthen that. And then go ahead and come on up. We'll grab that heel. Work to bring the leg out and extend it, reaching. Doesn't matter if it's straight, even if it's bent, bringing it out to the side. And then we'll bring that leg back forward, pulling back on that heel, archers bow pose. So pulling back that hip on a bow, reaching out. That hand on the leg can help you draw that back a little bit more and then maybe engage the core to reach out over the toes. And then our lift here. So again, if you don't want to do this advanced posture, just hang out here, breathe. Hands in front of the hips. If you want to work this, lean forward, press into the hands, lift the core, maybe raising that bottom up off the floor, maybe. Doesn't matter if it's not there yet. This can lead to elephant's trunk, where you bring that leg over, hands in front of the hips, maybe cross this leg to start out, lifting, and then undoing that and releasing lots of leg and core strength. Baby cradle pose, hugging that leg up, gently rocking back and forth, lifting up that hip. finishing up here, working it down. So on the belly, we got the arms aligned by bringing the hands to the outside of the elbows, the elbows are under the shoulders, and then just open them up, beautifully aligned right there. Draw the elbows back, start to relax the, the hips into the floor, release the glutes as you feel that lengthening in the lower back when you draw the shoulders and the elbows back. Lift the feet if you want a little bit more. Draw the elbows back, release the glutes. Release the thighs heavy into the floor. Release, reach the arms out. Inhale, the head and both arms and legs up, reaching. And then take the palms, reach them back, palms faced up, lift the chest a little higher. Maybe bend the knees, maybe grab the feet, lift up into bow pose, big pose. Great for stomach aches though. And then set all that down, pressing on up to cat pose. Hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips, chin in the chest, arching up, exhale. Inhale, press the ribs forward, open up the shoulders, reach the tailbone. Do that again, exhale, arch up. Inhale, press the sternum forward, reach with the tailbone. Good, coming into a spinal balance, reach the right arm out, the left leg, hug the ribs, reach, press back through that heel, reach with the top of the head, try to get parallel to the floor if you can. One more deep breath. Exhale, set that all down. Same thing on the other side, left arm, right leg, trying to get everything try it straight by hugging those ribs, keeping a nice flat back, pointing the pinky toe to square up the hips even here. One more deep breath. And exhale that down. Press back into child's pose. You can have knees together apart, whichever you like. He gives, God gives the spirit without measure. He's so generous. It might take time or it might not. It's up to God. He knows what's best. So continue to go to him. That's all we can do. Anything other than that is going to lead to hopelessness. So just go 
going to him again and again because he promises and he's never broken a promise. He promises he will. He will. He's about making things new. He's about redeeming, restoring. One more deep breath in. Exhale, slowly roll it on up, and we'll finish up on the back here. So on the back, we'll go ahead and just bring the hands down, palms face down. We're going to do bridge pose. So on bridge pose, bring the feet under the knees, bending the knees, and then hip distance apart, press into the heel, lift the hips up. Press the tops of the shoulder heads into the floor, press the back of your head into the floor. Maybe test and see if your legs and core are engaged by releasing the glutes. And then engage again, try to press an inch higher. Deep breath in. Exhale. Maybe add a little bit more, blocking the shoulder blades in, clasping hands and lifting just a little bit higher. So you want to add that. Maybe add a little bit more by extending one leg up, parallel knees to each other. That's a lot of hip strengthening and leg strengthening core. And then switching sides, if you did that, extending that leg out. And set that down. One more deep breath, lift the hips a little higher. Exhale, lower the hips down and hug the knees into the chest. So that nice decompression in the lower back. Release, take the hands out to the sides. Let the knees fall to the side wherever they go. Reach with the tailbone, lengthen the spine, turn your head the opposite direction of the legs. Relax the shoulders and the low back. Now, if you notice that your knees don't fall to the floor, you can totally use a block here and support them. And that just eases that stretch up a little bit. So do use blocks, they're, they're your friends. Really good, for good help. Head back to center, engage that core to lift the legs back up. Gently let them fall to the other side. Reach with the tailbone. Lengthen that lower back as you reach and then turning your head the opposite direction. Again, you've got that block if you need it to support underneath your knees here if you need that. Or a blanket. If you don't have blocks, a blanket works great too, or a towel. Relax the shoulders, relax the lower back every time you breathe out. Head back to center, we're going to engage the core, lift the legs up, do big circles with the knees in both directions, massaging the lower back and the hips. And then we'll bring the right knee, hug, hug it up high into the torso, press down and out with the left heel, foot is flexed. Switch, hug the left knee up into the chest, press down and out with the right foot, foot is flexed. Release, reach the arms overhead. One last big stretch here. Exhale, release and let the hands fall to the sides, palms face up. And with your head still on the floor, you can lift the shoulders up and adjust them down, relaxing between the shoulder blades. You can let your head roll to the right, relaxing the neck and the shoulders. Come back to center, let it roll to the left, relaxing your neck and your shoulders. And then back to center. So here in this last posture, it's great to just let everything relax. A lot of times people start getting up and skipping this part. This is one of the most important parts, just letting everything relax, letting the oxygen go and rejuvenate all those areas you stretch. So breathing, relaxing the face, muscles around the jaw, the forehead. Breathing down the neck, relaxing into the base of the neck and into the arms and the hands and the fingers. Breathing all the way down the spine, relaxing into the base of the spine, into the hips and the legs and the feet. And as you lay there breathing, remember to 
take that time to be still each day to step out of the busyness of the world so that you can reflect on what's truly important. So back to John 3, 34. God gives the Spirit without measure. Just right there where you're at. He gives it to you. No matter what season you're in. He gives it to you. You don't have to earn it. All you have to do is turn your gaze, gaze toward him. Believe that he sent his son Jesus to save you. That's it. And the fruits of the spirit are love and joy and peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, faithfulness, gentleness. Gives the spirit without measure. So you can start to wiggle your hands and toes, and when you're ready, you can turn yourself over to the side. Take a breath there, and then when you're ready, you can use your hands to press yourself up into a seated posture. And we'll reach up, thankful for another day, coming into prayer hands, exhaling them down over the heart. And thank you all for practicing with me. I hope that you learned maybe some new things and are encouraged to know that um, God is with you. The Spirit, He gives it without measure for all, for everyone. And I hope you feel great and stretched out and know that even if those advanced postures that we couldn't do them today, practice. And, um, you know, it's not about the posture, but it's amazing what will happen when you just give it that time. So thanks. Until next time, see ya.